Reggie's got his comfort blanket. Reg, get your blanket, Reg. Oh, no chance has come for it. He just looks so silly with that in his mouth. What do you look like, mister? Oh, Reggie. Little prince with... <laughs> Chance. Tug of war will happen any minute now. Get it, Chance. Get the blanket. All right, I'll get Reg. Let's go brew some beer. Always a good sign when the HLT is up to temperature first thing in the morning. 79 degrees. I need to empty these buckets, set up the underback, stick some acid in the boil kettle for a recirc, and then mash in. Not necessarily all in that particular order. Well, why didn't I get one of them ten years ago, or five years ago? What an easy way to mix the mash. Absolutely easy. Just make sure you don't hit the bottom or the sides with it. It's turbulent enough. Work to treat stainless steel rod and a plaster mixer if you like so there's just a few more litres to go in before this shuts off at uh, 2.20 in fact I think it's it's wet enough so we'll just top up the HLT again because that always ends up being a little bit low for the sparge I do need a bigger HLT maybe another 200 litres so I'm just going to hit this again with the mixer and we'll take a read in and we're looking for 66 degrees wow what a machine what a machine that was superb dead easy to mix that up oh we're a little bit overlooked but it is a cold day so I don't mind just letting this rest. Beautiful. 67. Might splash a little bit of cold in there. I'm not sure. Yeah, I should do really, shouldn't I? I think that is on the money. What do you reckon? Drop it in over here. I'll just put a little splash of cold water in there. And I think, after a little mix, oh, I don't think we're 0.3 low. I really don't, but I know that's what it's saying on the, uh, on the machine. There we go. That'll do. That'll do. Sweet spot, 66. That's what we want. On the money. Right, lid on. And finish cleaning the FV with acid. Coming up to the end of the brew day. I can't say it all went perfectly smoothly. I had a couple of visitors, uh, so that was a slight distraction today. But the main cause for concern was the utilization of the underback and Valentine over here. She is at the moment. So a couple of things that I knew were a problem and a couple of things that I didn't. So firstly, the pump, which reminds me actually, I've just got to quickly rinse it out. So the pump is too high when it's mounted here and I just cannot get any wort to go into it without laying it on the floor, which is not something I want to do. But we managed to do that, and then obviously once it's primed, we don't have a problem with uh, feed, in terms of the pump being able to pull the wort out of the underback. Secondly, the Valentine arm wants to cock over all the time. It wants to kind of rotate up on its, well, let's have a look at it on its RJT fitting here, it just wants to rotate all the time, which means 
the arm itself ends up tilting to the side so that bolts onto that and then that bolts onto the tank there so that was causing a bit of a problem and again I knew about that uh, thirdly setting the initial flow rate which I didn't know about so usually what I will do when I'm going to sparge is I'll do a vol off and there'll be a certain amount of liquid above the grain and I'll continue to do that until the liquid is clear and then once the liquid's clear I'll start pumping it into the mash tun boil kettle even from the mash tun to the boil kettle um, but the amount of liquid it takes to fill up the grant or the underback and then pump it back in causes quite a wide variation in the level of the liquid above the grain before we're introducing the water from the HLT to sparge with. So I think what I'm going to do initially is first things first on the vol off we'll bypass the grant immediately and we'll go to the pump and we'll vol off in the traditional way and then secondly I'm going to put some little stilts on this grant so it stands off the floor by probably six inches or so and hopefully that will give us enough height then to prime the pump naturally without having to play around with it and then thirdly what we'll do when we're going to transfer is we'll hook up to the grant we'll let the pump prime naturally and then before we introduce any liquid from the HLT to sparge we'll let the level get to where it wants to be above the grain let's say two inches above the grain and then once it gets there we'll then set and lock the valentine arm on the grant and then we can start to introduce the sparge water hopefully doing it that way we avoid getting a stuck mash because it happened three times today because I just wasn't I didn't get it dialed in right so apart from that it's been a grand old day like so yeah I've enjoyed it at the moment I've just got the work running through the plate chiller running through the pipe work as you can see it's up at 96 97 degrees C so even though it's had an acid treatment and it's been cleaned and sanitized I like to do this as well because it means that if there are any nasty bugs hiding in any areas that the chemical can't penetrate we know that the heat can because the heat will just conduct along the steel in the plate chiller and kill anything that shouldn't be there unless it's a thermophile which might anyway um, over here the glycol tank is down to minus 8 degrees which is where it wants to be this tank sitting at 14.1 at the minute it's got acid in there but we've got to do a 30 minute whirlpool yet so I'm not going to turn this on until I've got the whirlpool set up and then this can be recirculated for 30 minutes or thereabouts um, other than that yeah grain in there for tomorrow Stuart went and collected a ton of pale malt so we've got some fresh malt in stock here it is look at that good till 2022 it's got over a year on it which all of the maltsters and the hop merchants have increased their shelf life on all of their goods I think that's down to they've improved their storage conditions their packaging and particularly in terms of hops introducing nitrogen flush packaging and mylar bags so you, you generally get five years off of a hop these days before you need to worry about it right well that alarm is telling me that it's time to add the whirlpool hops so I'm going to go and do that. 
not Whirlpool, five minute edition. So that's the five minute edition in, and then it's obviously five minutes till flame out, but I just wanted to stop. I've resealed obviously the kettle, the lid, the vac, uh, not the vac, the condenser flue, and it's creating a vacuum. And I just wanted to be quiet and let the let the camera microphone adjust so you can hear this. So that humming sound is just the vacuum created by the liquid in the condenser condensing and reducing massively in volume and then that's what creates the draw which ultimately pulls pulls the steam in and through so if we close this lid we can see that not much steam is wanting to come out because it's being pulled into the condenser flue. If I just crack it a little bit, a little bit of steam comes out. But, uh, and you get to a certain point when atmosphere takes over. But there we go. I think it's a wonderful little mechanism. So I'll just put my elbow on the lid to push it down while I tighten it up. Just nip that like that. I want to turn the elements back on, so what I like to do is just kill the heat while I put those hops in, just to prevent it jumping out at me. And we've got three minutes left before these go in. We're chilling down to 80 degrees before that happens, though. So we've got the whirlpool going. Don't seem to be belting round, but it's definitely moving. So it's time to drop the whirlpool hops in there. There you can see it. Off they go. See ya. Into the tunnel of love. And away. And away. <laughs> so we are definitely whirlpooling. And away. So we've got a body of 500 litres of hot 80 degree work here. Yeah, they come back round again. And we've got it all moving rotating as a large body of sugary sweetness. Cracked it folks, absolutely cracked it. So we've got beer in the tank, temperature set, grain in the mash tun for tomorrow's brew day. We've got caustic in the boil kettle, water in the HLT. Both of those are set to come on at six o'clock in the morning because I'll be in for about nine, I think, tomorrow. So that gives it three hours for the HLT to climb. It was at 64 degrees when I turned it off. So it'll climb up to 79. And uh, three hours worth of caustic in, which is dead overkill for any, uh, for any CRP system. I've also done this today. Up here, changed out the 24 volt Tiny switches, really tiny switches. I knew I was overrunning these cables when I put them in. As you can see, we've got a little bit of a colour, bit of verdigris around the ends of the copper cable, and the colour isn't great. So, pulled them out, put some heavy duty switches in. We're going to put some big cable up there and change these out, but I just drilled them out, got rid of those uh, aviation plugs, and put a stuffing gland in there and a big bulky switch, so we'll change the fan supply for the cold rooms. They're not gonna be needed for a while, but 
I had half an hour to wait while the HLT uh, boil kettle even came down in temperature during the transfer. So I thought I may as well do it. And just on cue, one of the chillers has turned on, which are around here, to cool those fermenters. So everything's looking pretty sharp. Still a lot of tidying up to do, but I think I've done a heck of a lot, and uh, I'm pretty confident that after this week, we're going to have a week or two for these beers to condition and ferment before we have to package them. Still need some cans, not had a reply yet from the can company. Uh, but other than that, everything is go. So that's today finished with. First brew of 2021. Still in lockdown, but we're kicking it. We'll see you on the next one.